dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In the first reading today, we hear of that terrible turn of events for Absalom and for David, for all of Israel really, in which Absalom suffers the fate of an unprovided death, a death in which he has not prepared himself to die well. He's in a state of grave sin. At least one uh, commandment, one of the Ten Commandments, he's broken very clearly, honor thy father and mother. He's rebelled against his father. And from David's reaction to the news that Absalom had gained the favor of the people, he gathered, David gathered his people up and said, let us leave, lest we be caught by Absalom and all put to the sword. So clearly there's an intent even to murder his own father. And obviously what, what compelled him to turn uh, would seem to be another sin, the sin of coveting thy neighbor's goods, in this case the kingdom of his father. So Absalom is, is in a bad state morally. His soul is not well. And then, as we read, unexpectedly he came up against David's servants. And then his, his death is swift. He's caught up in the tree, and uh, Joab, David's commander, runs him through with the pike, puts him to death. This is a situation that any one of us could find ourselves in, not in the particulars, of course, of, of how exactly he died, but we are always in a very precarious state uh, in this life because we're not constant in our will and we can fall into sin. And then unfortunately, while in a state of sin, death could visit us unexpectedly. The Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us the consequences. Number 1861, about mortal sin. Mortal sin is a radical possibility of human freedom, as is love itself. I was just having a conversation yesterday with my brother about this topic, uh, the topic of sin, and he posed the, the common question, why did God allow all this evil and corruption in the world? And that's exactly what I said to him. That's the consequence of the necessary condition for love, which is freedom. God wants us to love. That's why he made us. Not, not, he did not will evil or sin. But there is always that possibility because of the freedom that we have in order that we may love. So mortal sin is a radical possibility of human freedom, as is love itself. It results in the loss of charity, which is love, and the privation of sanctifying grace, that is, of the state of grace, and that's what I presume is the situation with Absalom, that he's lost the state of sanctifying grace, unless he's had a, a conversion of heart that we haven't been told about. This loss of the state of grace, if it is not redeemed by repentance and God's forgiveness, it causes exclusion from Christ's kingdom and the eternal death of hell. 
for our freedom has the power to make choices forever with no turning back. However, although we can judge that an act is in itself a grave offense, we must entrust judgment of persons to the justice and mercy of God. So we don't condemn Absalom, but as some theologians speculate or explain judgment, the soul in the presence of God will be totally aware of, its, of the truth of, its, uh, of the state of the soul. And if we find, as we stand before God at the last judgment, any soul in our sin, we will remove ourselves from his presence because no one can stand to be in the presence of God except the pure. And of course, if a soul dies without repenting of grave sin, there is no possibility after death of conversion. Our, our, the state of our soul is fixed at the moment of death. That's the doctrine. And so when we hear this reading, it's a good occasion to reflect once again on the, the reality of those four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. And we need to live with those last things present in our conscience at all times. David would have loved to to forgive Absalom. We see from his, his reaction and the, and the whole way he uh, responds to the situation, he's constantly hoping for a reconciliation with Absalom. Just as God our Father in heaven, when we sin, he's waiting for the moment that we repent so that he can forgive us. There's always hope as long as we're alive. We heard even in the gospel today how a child was brought back from death. Jesus says, she's only asleep. How does he mean that? I'm not sure, but all of the other people were absolutely certain that she was dead, and Christ has the power to raise even from the dead, and, and that's what he has done here with this girl. For all intents and purposes, she's dead, and he brings her back to life, restores her to her family. And we know and trust that God can, Jesus can do this for each and any one of us if we're in a state of mortal sin. He can bring us back to life uh, through confession, is the, is the most secure way that we uh, have the sacrament. When we hear those words after a, a good, sincere confession, complete confession of our sins, the priest absolves us, and we know we are forgiven, but we should never presume that this is going to be um, our good fortune or that we're going to just automatically be forgiven. We do have to repent, and we do have to live and seek our salvation in fear and trembling, as St. Paul told us. So, brothers and sisters, I know that those of you here today are faithful practitioners of the faith that you live in God's will normally. But none of us should ever be so secure that we forget to keep our hearts humble and contrite and immediately if we commit any 
serious sin, seek forgiveness and have that good sense and that concern for our own welfare and as well as that desire to reconcile with God, which Absalom did not have that opportunity to reconcile with his father. We don't even know if he had any remorse over what he did, but he didn't have the opportunity. And so it's symbolic of what can happen to a soul in mortal sin. Let us reflect on these things. First and foremost, uh, to be responsible for our own conscience and our own soul, but also then to be motivated to intervene, to intercede for those many souls that may be in a state of mortal sin, in danger of eternal death, that we might also do our duty to call the sinner back to life. And may the Blessed Virgin Mary help us to have the charity to do this work of mercy towards our brothers and sisters once we ourselves are in a state of grace. Praise be Jesus and Mary.